Welcome to our guide on how to get good at player unknowns battlegrounds. In this game you're dropped into a massive fuck off map with a metric shit ton of degenerates with the objective to be the last player standing. When first loading into a lobby, it is very important to know the customs of these strange and wonderful people. It is traditional to ritually gather round a player with the pre-ordered clothes and repeatedly punch them while at the same time calling them a pre-order faggot. And who could blame them when the pre-order items are now worth over 8000% more than what they initially paid. Other pastimes include forming large snake lines, playing loud music over a shitty mic, and of course casual racism. However you won't hear any of these things over the clusterfuck of bullets being shot into your head. When first getting into a game, it is important to take note of the flight plan of the plane before making your decision to jump. As a general rule you want to land in a spot where there are plenty of buildings for your squad to loot, while at the same time avoiding as many other players as possible. On the way down, take note of where other players are heading, and try to find your own bunch of buildings that won't get you capped by some lucky fucker who happened to land on top of a sniper and enough ammo for a small country. Upon dropping, getting hold of a gun is your number one priority. Even a pistol is better than bringing a fucking farming tool to a gunfight. Within about a minute of dropping, a white circle will appear somewhere on your map. Players who are outside of this zone, once the timer has expired, will take damage from the force field that will slowly engulf the rest of the map. Much like how Salt manages to engulf every mother that ever seems to be made. It is in your best interest to get into the zone before this is able to happen. However depending on the original flight plan, there may be some spots within the map that are better than others. In this example, the plane is traveling more or less from the southeast towards the northwest. It is quickly up to you to identify the places that players are the most likely to drop, and more importantly, the places that you'll be free to loot as you please. An excellent opportunity in this game was to travel to the remote town of Kharki, as it was deemed simply too impractical by most other players. Finding vehicles will not usually present a problem, as the idea is to be the only idiot insane enough to stretch to these far off corners. From here, you can enjoy a solid 3-4 to four minutes of looting an entire town to yourself, before the white zone ultimately bends you the fuck over and makes you drive halfway across the fucking map. However this is why taking note of the original flight plan is so important. The line going through the map provided little incentive for players to explore the northeast side of the island due to the lack of buildings. Although the potential for loot isn't high for a majority of players, it is safe to assume that the small clusters of buildings on the northern coast can be swept through with next to no risk of contention. Along with this, the favorable position of the zone means that you'll likely be uncontested until the very end of the match and you'll run with minimal risk of being killed by players from behind. It is easy to think that high kill counts mean a more successful run, however in the end, the winning player is only ever required to kill the person who comes second. Coming first is simply a matter of being the last person alive, therefore, minimizing your contact with other players is the easiest way to achieve this goal. When navigating the landscape and player unknowns battlegrounds, it is much quicker to use a vehicle, However it must be noted that each and every one is equipped with modifications to make driving louder than a fucking near rape compilation, because traveling anywhere just announces your position to anyone in a fucking 300 meter radius. Players always run a risk when getting in any vehicle that it will run over a small land hill and spin the fuck out of control. This is an unavoidable problem for pro players and absolute fucking monkeys alike. So be sure to consider this whenever attempting to drive anywhere. When looting, players should always know what they should be looking for. To be considered for a win, all but the best players will need a helmet, body armor, medical supplies, a powerful gun, a decent scope, and squad mates that have any sense of self-preservation for their team. Anything else is a bonus and will further increase your chances of getting chicken for dinner. Smoke grenades especially are often overlooked by most players, however, having a decent stockpile allows you to cover yourself while running across open space or attempting to revive team squad mates. Enemy players will be hesitant to shoot into the smoke as it both gives away their position and expends an already scarce ammo supply. Get blazing. 
when playing in a squad, your teammates are likely to behave like absolute fucking idiots, and you'll almost certainly have to make the decision whether to risk your life to save them or to leave them to die like the degenerates they are. As hard as this can be to justify, having another player for enemy squads to shoot at can be the difference between being number one and getting cock blocked. Stealth is an often overlooked strategy for many players, however it is by far the most powerful. When crouching inside of a bush, it makes it almost impossible for other players to see you, unless they are actively trying to find you. In fact you can have an entire squad crouching in bushes, and as long as they stay the fuck still, it is unlikely that you'll ever be found. Simply laying down anywhere that isn't the middle of a fucking road reduces your visibility to next to nothing to anyone who hasn't already seen you. This makes it an excellent tool for getting across open fields when the number of players left drops into the single digits. This lay the fuck down move is also remarkably effective against enemy squads driving in vehicles. When you hear a car, immediately drop to the ground and stay more still than Batman's parents. In fact, players seem to become invisible to anyone in cars, no matter how close they seem to be. Never get noticed by four-wheeled fucks again. On the topic of stealth, it is recommended that you pick up and wear the darkest and slimmest clothes available to become slightly harder to detect. However it is worth mentioning that clothing items such as coats and jackets actually provide a sizable amount of carry capacity. So feel free to use them as off-brand backpacks when RNGesus is being a piece of shit. When attempting to be stealthy, no common item is more helpful than the silencer attachment. Simply having this on any weapon can allow you to take risky shots without necessarily compromising your position and ending up wishing you had kept using the hide like a bitch move. Throughout the match, the cargo plane will constantly fly over the map, dropping crates full of exclusive weapons and items. These can range anywhere between bullshit fucking garbage level shit to godlike one-shot snipers and a suit that basically makes you fucking invisible when near anything resembling grass. The decision to go after these crates is one you must think about carefully as the likelihood of getting gunned the fuck down goes through the roof when attempting to get anywhere near these temporary zones of death. A squad must consider their own current probability of winning the round and decide whether the possibility to get a slightly better weapon is worth the risk. Of course well coordinated squads can simply take the crate for themselves and loot it later at their own leisure. There's also a fun variety of glitches to play around with in battlegrounds. These include swimming through the air, getting fucked up by a roof, and accidentally creating a level 4 helmet. These bugs are to simply be embraced along with the rest of the experience and instead be accepted as intended features. Lastly, when all hope seems lost and you can determine that there's no way to get out of a situation alive, it is in your best interest to simply abandon your own squad and attempt to form an uneasy alliance with other players in the match. However the success rate of this strategy is less than reliable. This concludes today's guide on how to get good at player unknowns battlegrounds. Using this newfound knowledge, you'll now win 90% of the time and only get fucked over by the white circle in 10% of your matches. Scrub scribe for more guides that make viewers question their own life choices. But until next time, have fun and embrace the bullshit 